Hey, so I'm out here in the cornfield and I've been spending the last few days out here and I'm seeing how quick things are progressing. And I'm also looking at how good they're coming along. It's got me thinking about how to manage nutrients better in season, both macro and micronutrients. One of the ways I like to begin doing that is looking a little closer at nitrogen to potassium and nitrogen to sulfur ratios within the tissue. Let me tell you some more about that. <gasps> yep, you heard me right. Nitrogen to potassium and nitrogen to sulfur ratios in the corn plant. So a lot of times when I use that terminology, it might get accused of being too complicated or using some sort of agronomic witchcraft or sorcery. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the details and how you might apply some of this on your day-to-day -day use in the field. So you've done the due diligence to take a soil sample in your farm. You've done the due diligence to monitor yield. You've maybe done the due diligence to take a tissue sample. So think about all those things and how do you put them together to make the best agronomic recommendations. A lot of the times we don't spend enough time thinking about how the plant roots interact with the soil and how that soil gives back nutrients for that plant to turn into yield. One of the ways we do that is we can look at N to K and N to S ratios from a tissue sample. Now, we're not trying, we're not trying to feed the plant foliar macronutrients. That's not the goal. The goal is to now assess how those macronutrients that you applied to the field are coming back up into your plant. Having a knowledge around that is another way that you can estimate of any of the other in-season management practices that you might put into place, how well they're gonna respond. This might be things like fungicide applications, it might be things like other micronutrient applications, or maybe even get super crazy, a biostimulant or biological. So looking at a tissue sample and looking at N to K, N to S ratios, give you just another perspective or a position to pivot on to help make those decisions. So an example of this might be the difference between a couch potato and a high performing athlete. If you go home every night and you finish off a six pack of Coke and a bag of potato chips, you maybe don't care so much about your protein intake or your electrolyte level. Similarly with high yielding crops. If you're gonna get the most out of your crop and optimize fertility efficiencies, you gotta look at things a little bit closely and understand how they interact. Know that sometimes these assessments don't always lead to in-season management decisions. They might just lead to tweaks that you need to make to your fertility program overall for the years to come. Let's go into the field and I'll tell you a little bit more of the specifics around these ratios. So when we think about nitrogen to potassium ratio, remember we're not trying to foliar feed copious amounts of potassium across the acre. We're trying to understand how those roots are interacting with the nutrients you put down to make that plant more efficient. One of the things that potassium does, it's important for a lot of things, but one of the things that it does is it helps neutralize the negative charge of nitrate. We know that nitrate is negatively charged, it's mobile in the soil. It needs to have its charge neutralized to better enter the root more efficiently and then become mobile in the plant. Potassium helps do that. So we're at V3, V4 corn across a lot of the corn belt and we're beginning to go into the stages of grand growth. That's when a lot of that nitrogen is being uptaken. So it's very important to optimize those potassium ratios so the plant can more efficiently do that. So N to S, what does that mean in the plant? Nitrogen to sulfur. Not trying to put copious amounts of sulfur through, but trying to understand how those two nutrients are interacting. We know that nitrogen comes in and becomes mobile in the plant through potassium. Sulfur is the element that helps metabolize that nitrogen to turn it into something. And that something typically turns into test weight. So carbohydrates, sugar, starches, proteins, those sorts of things that the plant can make. Can we concentrate a little bit more on that into S ratio to then utilize better nitrogen efficiencies? And that's where we're trying to target that. So the first thing that I look at a tissue sample is to N to K and N to S ratios. And why? Because I use it to cross reference between my yield level, my, perform my field performance level for that season, and most importantly, the soil sample history that I have on that, along with my fertility program. All those components come together and they help me understand how the plant is interacting with this environment and maybe give me a better understanding of if I do plan on doing it in season management practice. Maybe it's a side dress, maybe it's another foliar application of a micronutrient, a biostimulant, a PGR, a fungicide. 
how can I better get the response? And I know if that plant is banging on all cylinders and those macronutrients are filled and they're in the right ratios, I'm better off in getting the response and optimizing yield across those acres. So for more information of the specifics around nitrogen to sulfur, nitrogen to potassium ratios, reach out to your local Winfield United representative or your agronomist. They'll have access to the information to help make better decisions across your acres. Next up, I'm gonna talk a little bit about nutrient hierarchy and elemental prominence and what you can do with a tissue sample to help gauge the response and optimize those applications.